How to animate fire. Let's get right into it. Every flame has its own story. Maybe it's an angry explosive blaze, a crackling campfire, or a calming candle flame. When you're animating something, it's essential to show the story and emotion behind its movement. In this video, I'll be animating a flame on a rooster character I designed for just this tutorial. I'll be animating Krita, which is a free open source software that I love to use in my animation classes here at Wing Canvas. I'll be focusing on using the straight ahead animation technique. This is where I draw the fire frame by frame instead of using the pose to pose technique where you draw key poses first and then the in-betweens. If you don't know why we're using the straight ahead, the short side of it is that this approach allows us to capture the organic characteristics of the fire, as fire is typically unpredictable and moves in a way that's almost impossible to plan ahead. By the end, you'll have a better understanding of how to animate realistic movement as a flame separates and merges. We're gonna be animating a ghastly, grumpy rooster. <laughs> with the fire on top of its head. And the only part I'm gonna be animating is the hair. So this is only just the rough drawing and I will be cleaning it up for the first bit and then afterwards we'll be animating the flame on top of its head. So fire, fire is very similar to a waving animation type. So it depends on the type of animation you wanna make. But if you wanna make a very simplified fire, you can always go with the good old candle, candle light. One key thing that you want to remember when it comes to animating fire is to keep in mind of where the base is. So the base of my fire is probably this over here. I'm keeping that in mind. It's more of just like a mental thing. I'm not going to actually draw it out, but in my mind, this is the base of the fire. And if the fire is stable, then the fire is always just going to be moving around this base. It's always going to be moving and swaying around the base. It's never really going to move too much unless there's a large gust of wind and it like blows it way off over like here or something. But other than that, it's going to probably stay relatively grounded over here. So when I'm animating this, let's say this is the first frame and then the next frame, I'm going to move. We're going to have a little bit of a wiggling type of animation. Just going to have it move over to the left. And I'm just going to do this really quick uh, and then it's going to flatten out and continue moving over a little bit. And you can see that I'm hovering around this base area like I'm not moving away from it too much. Uh, and then it's going to straighten over here. And again, I go back to that base and you can see maybe it won't do that just yet. I'm going to have it stay where that base is. So if I kind of flip through the images right now, you can see it's kind of like a waving pattern and motion. And so the next one will have the base now direct redirect the fire to the right hand side. And it's gonna go this way and maybe go be like this. So if I play it and I'm just gonna straighten this out a little bit more and you can see I'm continually staying within the base and I'm just pushing it back and now maybe this part is straightened and it goes this way. And then we just keep doing that over and it's coming up now, moving over to the right. And I'm just gonna bring that back up. So this is for a very, very basic waving type of animation. So if I take it off again, this is what it looks like. It's just kind of going back and forth and we, you can do this forever. I can just go left to right, left to right, and it'll loop back over and over again. This rule over here, essentially stays the same no matter how complicated it is it's just now you have maybe more moving parts but the rule of the fire always having a center base and then the fire moving around that base kind of stays true but for our rooster it's way more complicated i have more parts and different ends so what end up might happening is that each one might have its own base around it like each one might have its own base that it's kind of following and i'm gonna just have to keep track of all of these ones and sometimes they might even combine with one another like they might merge later on not only that but they might flicker off and then come off each other so we got our rooster so what i'm gonna do here now that i'm finally animating the hair is i'm just gonna kind of go from the left and work my way around the fire and each one is gonna have its own personality so i would say like this is one this is one this is big one and then we got one last one but they're all connected essentially to the massive base of the rooster's head and so the fire will always rotate around this area 
and I'm not going to be stick strictly to like A, B, C, and D. Like if one of them combines with another or one of them fades out, like it flows off, then uh, I'm just going to kind of roll with it. I think that's just also how fire works as well. So yeah, uh, I'm going to have this one start straightening out over to the left. So I'm going to have B go to the left. And I think I'm also going to have B maybe merge with flame A. And then C is also going to go to the left, but it's going to be puffing up. So I'm actually going to have possibly C fade out over time. So yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. And I'm going to have B slowly merge in with A over time. And C, I'm going to have it puff up. It's going to be doing its own thing. So I had it actually moving outwards. So I'm going to have to kind of follow through with that. Okay, so it was going this way as well. I'm going to might have D combine a little bit with C as well. Yeah, it's pretty erratic. So it's pretty forgiving with like what you can do with it. I'm going to finally have this one combine. And I'm actually going to have this start coming out this way now. So this is pushing in this way. And then this one is pushing out this way and this one is continually pushing this way and i might just slowly indicate the change in the tip and then this one's gonna combine maybe i'll leave a little bit of a gap so it makes sense okay this one was going in so i'm gonna start so like this part is going in so i'm just gonna tuck it and then this one is gonna have it go this way the part that's sitting right here, I'm just going to leave that static. I'm not really going to move it or anything. Fire, when there's different parts to it, I like to break it up to different parts. Um, unlike this red one that we did the first time, this one's a very simple one. It's more of like a candle flame. So it just moves back and forth. And because it's so straightforward, it only has one tail to worry about. But then once you want to make something a bit more complicated, like let's say campfire or fireplace fire where it flicks off and kicks off pieces of fire. Uh, not the ember parts, but like the flames kind of kick off and separate from one another. That's when it gets a little bit complicated. And that's what I'm actually aiming for when I'm doing this part up here. It's I'm going to have it kick off and taper off afterwards. So I'm kind of keeping that in mind as I'm animating. Like each part of it, the flame has its own personality and flow. And I'm trying to kind of just keep that in mind as I'm doing it. The The tricky part is going to be like finding a way to bring it all back afterwards because they're all kind of doing their own thing now. Actually, I might break this lower part now. I might have it come off and separate from the main body of flame. Uh, actually, I also might space these out because animating on twos might be a little bit too fast for the amount of frames that we've drawn. So animated on two on threes instead rather than on twos and uh it's gonna be really really quick hey that actually works i wanted to see if it would like flow and work and i would say this is actually working pretty good you know what i guess i was wrong animating on threes too slow so i'm now changing it back to twos <laughs> okay yeah actually that's looking pretty good hey i like that Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That looks good, and yeah, I think I will keep it as a blue flame. It's kind of like Hades from um, Hercules, and I think that looks pretty good. Eh. You can help support us as we continue to make free arts education by becoming a member on Patreon or YouTube. This will give you access to special perks like critiques and classes. So I'm going to just start indicating the fire breaking off right over here by creating a gap just so that it starts indicating that there's going to be a break happening soon. And I'm really, really building up this fireball. I want it to really set up the motion of it. Okay, I'm going to bring this one back to pointy because right now everything's pretty rounded and I want everything to kind of start having that pointy feel, feel again. So I'm going to bring it back. And we're going to be able to bring that back with this one too because now it's really getting thin. We're not going to separate it just yet. I'm just going to make that gap a little bit bigger. Have it pull over this way. And then this one, I'm going to bring it back. This one over here. I'm actually going to start guiding this front one to the left a little bit. And this part is going to start getting pointy. So it's going to start coming pointed again. So we can flick it 
and now this part is finally disconnected but then this part is now pulling down even more and then this part the gap is going to get bigger and then probably maybe in the next frame or maybe two more frames i want to really push or hold that frame and then now it's uh separated it's kind of gone off onto its own become its own thing it's its own flame oh you know what maybe i'll grow this and have this flick off separate from the main flame okay we're finally having this part break off question it will now be will i be able to reroute the flame back to itself okay this one was pushing down which means i'm gonna start rerouting it and then this one is gonna do a whole windmill aspect of the flame and i think this is way off the screen now okay <clears throat> now that I've drawn all these different elements, like how do I bring it back? And that's going to be the tough question. Because uh, honestly, this is like juggling like six things at once. It's like, okay, I have this flame going this way and then this flame going this way. Okay, what, what, what's next? Okay, so the flames that usually click, kick off, they also start diminishing in size. So I'm just going to have that slowly diminish. This is now going up and this is maybe coming down a little bit like like this bulb area over here it's pulling the flame down this way so that's kind of what I want and then let's see okay so I think this one over here I was starting to re I wanted to redirect it so I'm gonna just redirect it back and then this one is now also kicking off the flame so I'm gonna make this top half part for this one move up while this lower half is actually moving down to combine with this lower flame at the bottom so i'm gonna have it maybe not just combine just not combine <laughs> just yet but it's slowly getting there there we go a eh? it's looking not too shabby if i say so myself by the way the footage in this video is from a live stream and you can find the link to the full stream in the description below did you know you can start learning art from Wing Canvas for free during our weekly streams? I know, crazy. So if you want to know when we're streaming, join our Discord to be pinged when we're live, where you can make content requests and also get community feedback on your art. It's a great place to be, so definitely check us out on Discord. Because that, that works. Fire rises, it doesn't sink, so it doesn't really make sense to have it, have it like drip down it's not lava so i can't really do that so and then i'm gonna have it poof off to the side and go upwards there we go it's got a little bit more of like that menacing fire you know it's the type of fire where like oh yeah it's kind of evil looking yeah now the last phase of the animation process is the cleanup it's not the most glorious phase of animation but it's where everything comes together this is when I can focus all of my energy and attention on getting the line art to look as smooth as possible. Although I'm sticking closely to my original sketch, at this stage I do get a second chance to make any changes to the animation that I might have missed in the rough stage. You'll notice that I'm rotating my canvas a lot here. For me, I like to draw lines in a particular angle and motion that I find most comfortable for my arm and wrist. So having the screen be rotated at just the right angle helps me keep my lines clean and consistent. But as I'm cleaning up, I thought I'd go into the brush I'm using and why I picked it in case anyone wants to follow along and try it out. I'm using Krita's default brush that you can find in the brush preset under the paint category. The brush is called Bristles-1 Details, and I'm using this brush because if you make the brush size really large, you'll notice that it's actually made up of a bunch of small dots in varying sizes, as well as some boxes here and there. So this means that when I press hard on my stylus, there will be hints of texture in my line work. It's really, really subtle, but you'll be surprised by how your eye is able to pick up these small textures and how it can really add to the feel of the line work. It's a very simple brush that's pretty straightforward. Not a lot of bells and whistles to it when it comes to the opacity and layering properties, but that's kind of why I like it. And the entire rooster is actually drawn using this brush. So if you're using Krita, 
definitely give it a try if it looks appealing to you. And as you can see, the cleanup phase is pretty straightforward, nothing really to it. If you enjoyed this walkthrough, check out our virtual classes by our amazing instructors. We provide feedback, as well as informative lessons and engaging projects. Our classes range from drawing, painting, to digital drawing, as well as an animation mentorship class that I teach. We run through the fundamentals of animation, as well as fun mini projects to help elevate your animation skills. So if you like to improve your art skills, check out our website for more information. Start today and level up your practice. If you learned something new, please like and share with a fellow art nerd. And if you love receiving quality free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.